Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Praise to you, Lamb of God. Worthy are you, King of glory. Hallelujah. Be glorified this morning, Father. Be exalted, King of glory. I lift my hands to you this morning. I offer to you once again my sacrifice of praise. I acknowledge you this morning as King, King of my heart, King of my life, King of my home. You sit, you preside over creation. I join creation this morning to honor you, to bless you, to extol you, to celebrate you. You are worthy of all glory and praise. You who sits upon the throne deserve all glory this morning. I bless you for another day. Another day in the journey of the realities of the unfolding nature of your kingdom. The king who is seated upon the throne. All nations will bow before you. Kings and empires will come and go. But you remain forever. Because you are the eternal God, the creator of all things. The giver of life. The giver of purpose. The giver of vision. The essence of existence, it's you, Christ. This morning, oh God, as creation and the rest of the world celebrate who you are and what you are and what you have come to do in the redemption of humanity and creation, Lord, we celebrate you this morning. We thank you for such a time again like this. Yes. This is our devotion, our time of coming before you, seeking to hear, to know your voice, so our hearts can be aligned once again, so we can be adjusted, so we can be corrected, so we can be, yes, built up in accordance to your intentions. Yes, this is why we are here once again. This is why I am here, oh God, to continue as we have been doing every day to push the agendas of your redemptive counsel further. Hallelujah. I thank you once again this morning that daily we are, we are being built up. We are, we are being engaged. Your word is coming to us. Yes. Your spirit is engaging us. With your staff and your rod, you're correcting us. You're realigning us. You're building us up. You're removing the, 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 the dross within this order of life you call the silver. Thank you, God, that our redemption indeed will be clear. Nations will know. Nations will hear. Nations will see. And they will acknowledge who you are. Because indeed, your purposes and intentions cannot be forfeited, cannot be cancelled, cannot be hindered. You say, go declare it. Babylon is falling. Maradon is taking. The fragrance of your glory once again is in the firmament. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. The knowledge of your glory is being proclaimed. As wise men journey from the east to acknowledge and to pay homage 
to who you are. Kings are journeying from wherever they are to acknowledge who you are this morning. Lord, we thank you for your dream of redemption that is a life. For your dream of redemption that is still very much a life. In fact, it is growing on a day-to-day basis as we continue to interact with your spirit on this table that you've called us to meal. Thank you, O Father, that as we continue to eat of you and drink from you, that indeed our eyes of understanding is being enlightened, even as you empower us to stand to stand with vigor to stand with strength with courage that cannot be compromised that no matter what the enemy does that no matter what the enemy throws at us yes daily we are being renewed why because you have given us your mind thank you that you are not just born in a manger you rose you died you rose You're seated at the very right hand of the Father. Making intercession for us. And that is the emphasis for our day. What you are doing. What you are saying. What you are demanding of your ecclesia in this hour. This is our focus. This is our mandate. This is why, oh Father, I am here this morning to see that in everything that we do, that in our intentions, that your kingdom gets to advance, that your appearance gets to become nearer. Yes, your word says our activity must fast and must hasten your return. So I bless you this morning. The law of the firmament are hearing. The firmament are bearing witness. When you give us a vision, no one is there. When you speak of your intention, no one is there. No one was there. When you collided, yes, with Jacob on the road to Pandanaram, he thought he was escaping, but he collided into his destiny. We thank you this morning. Just as Jesus was born in the manger as a king, Lord, we thank you that you are rebirthing the seed of your intentions once again in our life as the world celebrate christmas may we celebrate the ascended christ the reality of truth and grace yes awaken in our hearts that we may be positioned not being shaken not being moved but aligning returning back to the asian path where our vision is calibrated and constantly being recalibrated, watching at the door, at the gatepost of your prophetic desire and design for this hour. I honor you, Father, that we are not captured and we refuse to be captured. Thank you that, Jesus, we will forever celebrate you because you are the King seated upon the throne of our hearts. That this is not an event. That today is not a day of event. Today calls for sobriety, humility, submission, a recounting of our life, a reevaluation of our life. Yes. Yes, Father. May we understand what your spirit demands of us, what your spirit requires of us, what your spirit is sounding and proclaiming. May the nations hear. May it be clear that we are not of them, O oh God, who draw back. May our celebration be the appearance of your kingdom. May our celebration be the awakening of a holy zeal within our hearts. May the seed of your truth, of your intentions and counsel, once again, fill the atmosphere, fill the firmament. May that which you have impregnated our heart with be that which, O oh God, we live for. Paul said, this is one thing I do. I forget the things that are behind me. Oh, Father, I thank you this morning that we look unto you, Jesus, the King upon the throne 
of our hearts. And one of these days, the world will know that you're not just something to be celebrated in a manger. That they will know that you rule, you reign, that you are alive. That the religion and traditions and humanistic man-made systems that have been offered and given to us in exchange of the truth. That Lord, as we sound this alarm, that people will be awakened to this voice, to this truth, and they will cease, oh God, from the hocus pocus, that they will come to an acknowledgement of what you have birthed in their spirit, that their soul will stop running after some things that is man-made, but rather they will allow you to citadel upon their heart. That wisdom will guide them and build them. Oh yes. That wisdom will become their guiding light. That understanding will instruct them. That we all will become part of the apprehended ones. So that we can indeed hasten your return. We bless you Father. We exalt you. We glorify you. May your word continue to, yes, sharpen us. May your word continue to adjust us. May your word continue to build us up. May we not compromise this value system, this order of life that you have called us into. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Your kingdom come. Your will once again be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Well, if you are joining me this morning, uh, wherever you are, if you're watching or you will be listening to this uh, broadcast later on, podcast later on, well, I want to welcome you. It's once again a great honor and a privilege to share this moment with you. We thank God for his love, his mercy that are new every morning. If you are celebrating Christmas or you're celebrating just the holiday, whatever you are doing, amen, however you define this uh, uh, this period in time, well, I want to welcome you to the potter's gate and I want to celebrate with you. Yes, as we grow in the Lord and in the things of the Spirit, yes, there are basic foundational truth and revelation that must guide and instruct our movement, amen, towards the place of the finish, alright, so we, we thank God for what the Lord, amen is doing and what the Lord, amen is impressing upon our heart, this is our devotional uh, 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 period where we look at the heart of God, the mind of God and try to comprehend, amen, and of course apply that which the Spirit of God is revealing to us so we can grow so we can continue to develop and come into the place of perfection in, in the things of the spirit indeed the lord is looking for a mature company of people yes that can bring his prophetic uh, uh, intentions to pass and i and i understand that uh, a lot of people out there okay uh, uh, some of them would not agree with my 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 philosophy of you know of the things of god well my philosophy is basically based on the word of god you know the lord delivered me years ago you know, from you know what I call the, the 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 idea the ideas and the ideologies of what men call religion, particularly what people call Christianity, and and I know that is a difficult thing because you're stepping on you're, you're stepping on, on 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 toes. You're challenging the status quo. Yes, and I, and I can I can I can. In fact, let me encourage you to do the same. You understand? You see, there are two there are two uh, school of thought out there. All right, there is that which amen we see in the word of god amen that has been written down that has been you know put down there for us amen as a reference that we can look at and i can assure you that god amen in his wisdom and in his divine uh, uh, if you will in his divine power and authority allowed those who who who, who pen down what we see in the word of god amen not to tamper with it because some people tell you well even that which is in the word of god has been tampered with so how can we actually believe what we call you know the bible 
today because that's the argument a lot of a lot of people to tell you well you know that thing is not you know uh, properly uh, written or was misinterpreted you know all of that i mean if you have to go on that argument you won't have any scripture amen to stand upon because amen the bible says holy men as they were inspired of god amen yes wrote down the things that we have amen that has been given to us today and it's from that premise amen that i take my stand and that requires faith amen that requires faith that requires trust if you want to walk with god you have to have faith you have to have trust amen in what he has said or in what he has given all right and then there are you know those you know there's the other school of thought all right who basically you know are seeking to rewrite if you will that which amen is in the word of god they're seeking to correct it so they are looking at things that doesn't suit their narrative they remove it and then they have their own you find that also there and so there's all kinds of confusion and all of that all right if i begin on the on the on the argument of is christmas you know godly or not godly i mean some people fall on one side some on the other side so i'm not even going to touch on that amen but one thing i know is that of course jesus was born amen into this world of course god sent his his son into this world for one purpose amen for the redemption of creation for the restoration of humanity and to me i think that is where i want to camp amen and allow the lord to guide me and lead me and continue to journey and any other thing amen that comes as a ceremony man-made idea and all of that amen some some will tell you christmas was actually you know on the 17th of december i don't know if you have read you know that you know that before some you know there all kinds of narrative there so to me it's not just about the day i think i have moved beyond just you know uh, uh like like brother paul was said to the colossians he said he says he says don't be part of those who only hold on to the leg but don't hold on to the head of the truth you see in in the word of god there is that to which amen is is vital all right you can't do without you need you need this truth you need this understanding you need this revelation amen to be able to build every other thing that you stand for on all right and there are those you know little you know other truths here and there if you will doctrines okay they are very important but they will not be as important you, you see in the order of priority you've got to know what is more important okay what comes first what comes last all right in the in the in the things of god in the principles of of biblical truth you've got to know what are the what are the key you know uh, uh, if you will doctrinal truths okay that cannot be that must not be eroded that must not be tampered with amen one of them of course is the birth of jesus christ amen and of course is death yes yes his death yes his burial his resurrection hallelujah and of course his ascension and it's from this point that we kind of take the cue of what amen we define to be ministry i believe in the birth of jesus christ i believe amen yes in his in his in his development of course in his in his in his arrest in his in his burial in his in his in his arrest in his burial and of course amen in his in his death his resurrection and of course in his ascension Th that you cannot take from me because all of that are part of the component amen of you know if you will the the, the 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 vision of god for the redemption of man and that redemption amen then speaks into what we can call amen the the issues of the kingdom of god amen so if we allow the enemy to lie to us or deceive us or derail us from this pattern of of truth then then we have nothing to hold on to then we are truly done for. We are deceived. Amen. And in the days that we're living, we don't want to be deceived. We want to, we want to have, amen, a true standing. And there are a lot of people out there, thousands, maybe millions, amen, who are actually confused about so many things today. Why? Because the people who have handled the word of God, amen, they've handled it with all kinds of frivolous, you know, uh, uh, fraudulent, you know, you know, agendas. You know, people have preached all kinds of things to promote an idea, to promote promote amen you know you know a, 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 an agenda all right to sell something jesus dealt with amen those sellers in the temple amen it, we still find such people today even in our day in our day i can assure you that many today who are who are promoting amen the, the if you will the gospel of christmas amen not because really they want to celebrate christ not because really they love jesus christ not because they really understand they understand the revelation the progressive revelation of his birth 
amen, and its ascension, but because, amen, it's a means, amen, of selling something that, that, that you know, that brings money into their pocket, amen, that add God knows what into, into the, whatever they are building. And this is one of the reasons today that I believe the Lord, amen, is speaking to me, amen, that we need to return back to the point and place, amen, where we recapture his vision where we recapture God's dream, where we recapture, amen, God's, God's plan for our life, amen, and then begin to understand, amen, the purpose that he has set on motion, amen, to bring such dream, to bring such a vision, amen, into reality. Because indeed, when we don't have, amen, a true sense, a true understanding, amen, of what God's purpose is, for redemption for humanity guess what uh, the devil can give us amen uh, you know purpose the devil can give us amen you know a mission just as we have seen today amen many things that amen we are proclaiming and we are you know preaching out there if you if you truly scrutinize them and really dig into yeah, you begin to see that uh, there's a man-made agenda there <laughs> there's something there all right that man seeks to benefit and this is something that I frown amen against this is something that I, you know, I, I, I don't want to have anything to do with it, regardless of what you think about, you know, think about about me, regardless of what you say, amen, it, it really doesn't bother me. One thing about vision, amen, is that you have to be clear, you have to be persuaded. Thank you, my dear sister Kumi said this morning, you know, for joining. Nice to have you. I think you are the only uh, uh, audience that I have this morning, apart from those that will be listening later, and that's very good, that's very good, because amen, we can preach to one, we can preach to a thousand, we can preach to a million, amen, it really doesn't make, you know, a, a difference to me. <laughs> you understand? So, so we bless the Lord for where the Lord, amen, has brought us to, amen. One of the things that I believe God, amen, will, will help us to do in this season is that we will be able to recapture our identity vis-a-vis, -vis, amen, our sense of existence. So we are not just being push and, and being thrown here and there by every wind of doctrine. I mean, we do this year in, year out. We go through this motion. Uh, like I said, many that will be celebrating what they call Christmas today, amen, don't even have a, an understanding of who God is. They, they, they have not even come to the knowledge of Christ. They don't even have, amen, a, 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 you know, a scent of, 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 of love and passion for him. All right? But, well, it's part of the tradition. Isn't this why Jesus Christ came? Isn't this why Jesus Jesus, you know, interrogated and challenged the, you know, the, 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 the system of the day. Isn't this why, you know, somebody like John the Baptist refused, amen, to continue in the path, amen, of his, of his, of his father's, you know, uh, you know, you know, profession, who was a priest, amen. John, John was born into a priesthood, but guess what? The Bible says he was living, amen, in the wilderness, he was living in the wilderness and it's in the wilderness that the word of the Lord came to meet him. Listen to this. The days of John are not different from our day. You may have all the, you know, uh, you, you know, whatever you call it, all the gadgets and all of that you can connect. Your heart must, must, must not be captured, amen, by, by, by the popularity, by, you know, by the lies, you know, by, you know, what men you know, are proclaiming and are declaring as the truth. You've got to be able to scrutinize, particularly if you have the spirit of God. The spirit of God is there to bear you witness. Some people will go to the extreme and say, well, this guy doesn't believe in Christmas. Well, I don't believe in Christmas, but I believe in Christ that was born. And there's no place in the scripture that tells us, oh, there's a day called Christmas that we must celebrate. To me, that is good. You can do that. But to me, that is not a doctrine. I'm not obligated. Amen. I'm not obligated. I want to, you know, put my time, you know, I want to invest my time on things that advances, that accelerate, hallelujah, the, the issues of the kingdom. There are weightier things in the heart of God. There are weightier things in the heart of God. Amen. Than, than to join, you know, some some groups who, like I said, today it's all going to be lie. Many people will be going to their family and all of that. It's good. I believe in all of that. But at the end of the day, it's all superficial if you ask me. If you want to be truthful, if you truly want to be truthful, you will notice that many things that we're going to be doing today are superficial. They have no sense of, of life. They have no sense of truth. They have no sense. You see, God will use any means and method, amen, to advance his purpose. 
Yes, God will use the gathering. God has been using all kinds of means, all kinds of, you know, instruments. Amen. If, 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 the, if there's no human being to use, he will use a donkey. He said, if you won't praise me, I will raise up stones. All right. So the fact that God uses, amen, an event a day to do something does not mean that, amen, that thing becomes a proof of God. You see, the Bible says we must come to maturity. How do we come to maturity if we are not ready to tell ourselves the truth? How do we come to maturity if we are unwilling, hallelujah, to address what matters, the weightier matters in the heart of God? You see, I love it where I'm able to declare truth that make people either love me or hate me. Because that's the position of our Lord Jesus Christ. You either love Jesus for what he preached or you hate him. In fact, there were people who so loved what he came to declare that they laid down their life. They died for what he brought. They died for what he preached. But guess what? On the other hand, there were those who actually, you know, hate what he preached to the point, amen, that they arrested him and handed him over to the Roman Empire and make sure that he was crucified, that he was, he was killed. So if, 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 if you are amen, a believer and you really want to go on with the Lord, you really want, you know, your life to count for God, guess what? You've got to choose a side. As long as the word of God, amen, becomes your standard, you have, you have chosen a side, amen, and that side is going to attract, amen, yes, people that will love you and those that will hate you. So if that has not become, amen, you know, a reality to you, <laughs> then I don't know what you're doing because indeed you're wasting your time. Truth, amen, will attract both hate and love into your space. There are, there are leaders, there are church leaders, there are men of God, women of God, amen, who are basically tolerating me. <laughs> they tolerated me because oh I, 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 but but I know they're tolerating me because they don't like what I say you know because the things that I say amen yes it, it, it disrupts what they have built the ministry they have built it challenges yes their values and their status quo and it tells me that many of those people have not truly truly caught what I call amen the dream of God. For human redemption. They have not caught it. And it's going to take. Amen. A strong. You know. Root awakening. It's going to take a strong. Amen. Yes. Prophetic voice. To challenge. To challenge the status quo. To challenge the religious status quo. Friends. The night is long spent. This is a brand new day. This is the third day. We cannot continue, amen, in the same religious circus. We cannot continue, amen, in the same, amen, religious entertainment. And we say we're spiritual and we're advancing the things of God. Yes. Look at the way God spoke to us yesterday. What a word. What a word. The word was sharp. The, it's like, the, you know, the, 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 the sword of the spirit was sharp. It was cut. I could feel, I could feel the sword of the spirit cutting through. And the Bible says, only the word of God, amen, can actually separate what is soulish from what is spiritual. When you raise the bar of truth and you continue, amen, yes, to, to sharpen, amen, that truth. I can assure you, you'll be able to cut through certain things that looks very complex. You'll be able to deal with certain re re relationships that you have entangled yourself in, amen, that, 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 has, that has almost kept you, amen, in, in prison. Truth, just like vision, amen, would define, amen, who are your friends from who are your enemies. <coughs> amen, friends. You see, the voice of a town cry, the voice of a watchman is heard. It's not hidden. His position is visible for all to see. You will make mention of the Lord. Give him no rest and give yourself no rest. Position yourself. There's a time God says go into hiding. There's a time God says I need your visibility. Because your visibility will help others to get direction. Your visibility, your sense of voice, 
the, not, not crookiness, not, uh, 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 you, you, you stand, you stand on what God, amen, I've said and I've shown you. He said, for this reason, I have called you. And when Saul came into the call of God, when he came into the knowledge of God's intention for his life, I, I love it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing a series of, of teaching, amen, on, 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 on vision purpose amen and focus redefining vision purpose you're gonna love this you want to you want to be part of this series i just finished my note yesterday excellent it's like i've never you know you know seen anything like this before and when it comes to vision when it comes to redefining purpose of course i've written a whole book on purpose but what the lord was showing me on purpose whoo jesus you don't want to miss this you know what we are, we are, we are in the end of the days. We are, this is a, this is the end of the age. This is the culmination, amen, of, of the end of the age. We have to come into maturity. We have to come into knowledge. We have to scaffold. We have to pull down whatever we have built that is not in alignment, that does not reflect, that is not showcasing, that is not re revealing Christ, that is not maturing and perfecting. Amen. Yes, the, 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 the saints, whatever we are doing, whatever relationship you are into that is not reflecting the glory of God, you've got to, amen, bring that thing under the scrutiny eyes of God, under the light, under the such light of God. Say, God, try me, like David said. Don't follow because, well, everybody believes it, everybody accepts it. The Bible says, if the days are not cut short, even the very elect will be deceived. Have you read that? So, Mr. Preacher, Woman of God, hear the voice of God. You can be deceived by an inch. That's what the Lord said to me this morning. You can be deceived by an inch. I know you know so many things. I know you have great revelation. I know you've written books. I know you can pray. I know you are an intercessor. But guess what? You can be deceived just by an inch. And the Lord demonstrated that to us with the life of somebody like Peter. Peter was one of the most closest, you know, uh, 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 disciples. This minute, Peter was having the revelation of who Jesus, who Jesus is, where he came from. Jesus affirmed and declared, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father. Not everyone have access to the father. The Lord granted Peter such access of revelation of who, amen, the Messiah is. And on the other side, here's the devil using Peter. Amen. On the platform of a false purpose, of a false order of life. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm going to die. Peter is rebuking Jesus. You're not going to die. We don't want you to die. Oh, we want you to live with us. We want you to continue with us. Oh, man of God, we don't want you to leave. We just want you to continue to prophesy into our life. I mean, in the natural sense, you would think what Peter was saying was the right thing, was the good thing. I mean, Peter wasn't, he wasn't cursing Jesus. He wasn't rebuking Jesus. He just said, no, you won't die. We don't want you to die. You're the Messiah. You have the power. You have the authority. You can do all things. Why should you die? No, we're not going to let you die. <laughs> and our Lord was able to see behind the voice. That's called discernment. Don't let the, the niceness of people don't let don't let the good works of people camouflage amen yes their deception such that you cannot see amen their true agenda some people will be nice to you yes just to wangle them themselves into your space to sow that seed yes what are we doing we've got to we got to we've got to upgrade we've got to build up amen this this order listen listen the work our work with god it's not a it's not it's not um it's not a part-time thing and it's not palatable you know it is 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 a is 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 a, is a walk of one amen who is who who is at war every step you take must be watched must be guarded let you step on a mine 
You cannot afford to be just be working frivolous and just be doing your own thing. No, you've got to have sobriety. You've got to be careful. You have to have a sense of discernment. You have to have a sense, hallelujah, of urgency while you're celebrating life. Or else the enemy who's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy will take advantage of your ignorance of frivolous you know, attitude. There's a mandate that we need to come into and finish in this period in time. And that's why we'll continue to raise the bar, you see. We'll continue to raise the standard of, of, the, of, the, of the intentions of God. Even if we are not reaching that standard, that doesn't mean we should lower it. We should, we should lower it. The fact that, oh, that's high, doesn't mean that we should not seek to attain it. You don't know. Don't look at yourself. Don't look at, you know, your ability in terms of trying to attain. You can't attain the things of God by your own ability. The Bible says, amen, that we should be perfected in all things. The Bible says, amen, we should owe, we should owe no man nothing except love. You should aim to attain such a truth. Don't say, well, this is too hard. This is too hard. Who can bear this? Well, they left. That's, what, that's where they made the mistake. They should have said, Lord, as they did you know, in other times, increase our faith. Give us a knowledge of how to attain this thing. You see, that is me. When I see something in the word of God as a standard, I want to get that thing. I'm like, you know, Caleb. That mountain's been given to you. Well, I'm able. And because you are my vision. You are my sustainer. It's not by might. It's not by power. Don't drop the standard because you feel it's unattainable. Don't drop the standard because you feel, well, nobody's going this route. They say, seek for the ancient path. Ask for the ancient path. Find it. Walk in it so you can find rest for your soul. The soul will continue, yes, to, to, to involve itself in all kinds of things. And the enemy is very aware of that. And that's why it gives us all kinds of, you know, occupations and all kinds of, you know, work. And, and, and we call it purpose. And at the end of the day, by the twilight, we just realize, wait a minute. Half of my life has been spent and I've not even begun to understand why I'm living. You ask some people, what's, what, what, what's the purpose of your, of your life? They don't know. They just, they, they, they are just occupied by an occupation. <laughs> Occupied by an occupation. And I'm not just talking about people working in the secular world. I'm talking about even people who claim they're in ministry. Occupied, amen, by, you know, by ministry. Occupied by church, churchialism. Occupied by, you know, a pastoral, whatever. Occupied by all kinds of things. You're occupying all kinds of things, but you are not occupying, amen, the intentions of God. You are not advancing. You are not moving. And the things of God are not moving through your life. But like I said yesterday, we're going through the motion, rounding the same mountain, 40 years, wasting time, effort, and resource, and relationship. No wonder we, we, we burn out. No, no, God help us, friends. Truth sets us free. Let me remind you again, this is a prophetic platform. Our devotion is built strongly on the demand of God, on the requirement of God, on our call to worship, to live a life that honor God. So in case you're wondering why we speak the way we speak, you need to know the context. You need to know our assignment. You need to know, amen, what the Spirit of God, yes, has impressed upon our heart. Here's something that the Lord dropped in my spirit this morning. The struggle of humanistic man-made organized religion which basically covers, if you will, 90% of what we call church out there. When I was in Nigeria, the Lord said to me, I'm sending you to the Lordship of the house of Israel. So don't tell me, well, this guy doesn't love the church. Oh, I can lay down my life for the church. But not the church, the enemy, amen, has induced, has established, that sounds like, that look like, that mimic the things of God 
but in fact is a fraudulent one. The struggle of humanistic man-made organized religion, in my opinion, is one of the deadliest of all Satan's strategy. Satan has all kinds of strategies that he has put in place, set in place to make you stumble, to make you amen, a fall, to, to get you into his hole. But the most deadliest one is what is called organized religion. What we call church. Not church as heavens, amen, designed it. Not church as God, amen, ordained it. Because if we're doing it the way God ordained it, friends by now will have done the job. It only took Jesus Christ, amen, <laughs> three and a half years, the job was done. How long does would it take us, amen, to come to the knowledge of the truth to the point where we begin to implement it? Why? Because the enemy has given us all kinds of purpose in the name of religion, in the name of spirituality, but more so in the name of Christianity. So this is the day where we are getting to rediscover our calling. We are getting to rediscover, amen, our, our mission. We are getting to rediscover our objective. We are getting to rediscover, amen, God's dream for us. We are getting to rediscover, hallelujah, what God means when he says we are his temple. We are getting to rediscover what it means to be a living stone. We are getting to rediscover how to connect to each one and not you connecting to the wrong place and connecting to the wrong people and wrong relationship. We are getting, it's, it's a season of rediscovery. In the season of rediscovery, Alea, the issues of vision must be in focus. Because when you when you have believed the lie, you have bought the lie, amen, and you are living in in you know in an ideology of what, amen, of, of 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 the lie being the truth, then it's gonna be very, very difficult. That is what is called a stronghold. A stronghold, amen, is a strong position of, of belief, of idea, of ideology. I used to have this book, yes. Understanding the soul. If you can find it, look for it. Liberty Sabbath. The Unsurrendered Soul. This is one of the few materials that I came in contact with when the Lord began to open my eyes to understanding issues of stronghold. I have another one, yes. Shattering your stronghold, Liberty Sabbath. You say, I love to read. I love to find out and discover how, amen, I can get to know what the Lord is saying regarding a subject. I want to know who is a, who God has opened his or her eyes in that area. This is one woman, she's late now, but what a blessing to our generation, to the body of Christ. In fact, I believe many people in the body of Christ don't even know who she is. But she, 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 was, she was a voice. She was an instrument, Liberty Sabbath. That's her name. You can look for a book. In fact, you can download some of our material online, if I'm not mistaken, on PDFs. But look for Liberty Seven. She will help you to understand what a stronghold is. When the Lord, amen, uh, began to deal with me years back, almost three decades now, amen, on the issues of stronghold, God brought this, this woman's material across my way. Of course, she's from America. But what an insight. And when God began to speak to her back in the 80s about the issues of stronghold, guess what? She was actually cast out of our church. They, 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 they excommunicated her. They, they said she's bringing heresy. But she was just basically, you know, probing and challenging what amen, they're doing in compared to what she sees in the word of God, which is the same thing that I'm doing today. Have you noticed that people really, amen, don't want the truth. In fact, those who preach the truth, amen, are those who we hate the more. We hate the most. It's until they die. I mean, just like any prophet. It's until that prophet died before people begin to say, wow, but this man was actually telling us the truth. This man was actually saying the truth. What, what is it that when we come in contact with truth that maybe we have not been open to before, that the first thing that happened to us is to resist it? Why? Why can't we sit down and you know, really go to the Lord and say, is this thing right? 
You know, the word of God is concealed. You, every time we read the word of God and we think, oh, yes, we know. No, we only know what we are ready to handle. We only know what, amen, the Lord is willing to open our eyes to see. The word of God is a continual unveiling, hallelujah, of the revelation of truth. This word, you, you read this word today, you go back tomorrow, amen, you'll be seeing something else. Because the word is alive. The word is interactive. The world today wants to talk about interaction. No, the word of God is interactive. When you read the word of God, something happens on the inside of you. Have you, have you started reading the word of God and suddenly you start feeling convicted? Or you read certain places and you suddenly you have joy. You don't know where that joy comes from. Or suddenly you feel ex, you just have this excitement. Or sometimes you just feel like, wait a minute, I don't understand that. And you're troubled. Yes, the reason for that is they want you to go back again and search and search and search and look. Yes. Sometimes certain word you read will send you, amen, yes, on a journey of research. Certain word will just bring you into a new atmosphere of revelation. Wow. It's like that eureka moment. Wow. But you've been reading it. Why? Well, because the word of God is interactive. The word of God is relational. It's not a, it's not a paper. Oh yes, the word of God is contained in the paper, but the word is living. Jesus says, amen. The word that I speak to, they are spirit. They are life. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want to understand what are the struggles, what are the blockages, what are the lies that we have believed. The lies told us, the lies that we have bought with our own hand, we paid for the lie, we bought it. <laughs> The lies we inherited because we are born into a certain family, you know, uh, 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 community, relationship. The lies that we, we developed because of the environment we grew up. There are various ways that we, we, can, we can come into stronghold. Lies that we bought, we bought because, amen, we went to sit at certain places. In certain, you know, uh, 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 communities, churches, or, you know, uh, you know, God knows who. Mi you know, mystic people and sp spiritist. Lies we came into because of covenants that were made on our behalf. All of these things are openings of doors for the enemy to build, amen, something within our minds. See, some of the things that we're struggling with mentally, amen, are not just issues of ideas and information. Some of them are very spiritual. They have a, they have a stronghold over our mindset. Strongholds that have become habitual. No matter how we pray and seek God for freedom and deliverance, it's like this thing just say, I'm not moving, I'm not bulging. This, this is my house. <laughs> this is, I'm going to stay here. And I know nice people, nice people who have strongholds. In fact, the expression of nice, niceness is born out of strongholds. They use strongholds as a veneer. They use their niceness to cover their strongholds. They use their good works to cover, amen, that part they don't want you to see. And you, if you're a person of understanding the things of God you need to you need to remove the veil and see what is behind because everybody is struggling with something some people are more open in dealing with it some are very secretive no they hide it they don't want you to know and we import those struggles into the church just as we saw in the Corinthians I'm in the in, in Corinth church born People of God coming together, worshiping, but all of those people have struggled to the point the Bible says some of them, some of some of the men were sleeping with their father's wife. That was how terrible these guys are. And but they are all Christian going to church, the Corinthian church. They all prophesy, talking about the coming of the Lord, but they all hate each other. They all dislike each other. When they come together, Amen, to have a meeting, Amen, is is about who who is going to do what first. Who's going to who's going to be the head? Corinthian church. Many of us are a reflection of the Corinthian church. So don't don't hide behind your niceness and your so-called, you know, you 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 can you 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 can express yourself, you you can talk. No, nobody's a master in this thing. 
Only the one who sits upon the throne of our heart is the master and is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And until we allow him to take over our life, you see, many of us don't want to be that vulnerable. We want, like I said yesterday, we want 50-50. I give you 50, I can take 50 from you. Let's meet ourselves, amen, halfway. Is that not what we call marriage today? Let's meet ourselves halfway. That's not God. It sounds logical, but that's not, that's not God. You bring everything on it, I bring everything. There's no 50-50. There's no 50 you hide behind. That's why things are not working. We start a church, we start with our agenda because what the man of God calls, amen, God said. What the man of God calls, amen, a vision from God, no, is an idea that was cooked up. Amen. By you know, by 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 by, by an induced you know you know a, a, a objective that comes from his soul. And truth sets us free. You want to be free? You have to be ready to confront the truth. Strong goals, amen. Of 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 false have big doctrines. Strongholds, amen, of half big doctrines. There's nothing as as deadly, as 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 terrible, amen, as half truth. Because people will be listening to you. Wow, everything you're saying. I mean, look at what okay, I don't want to go into mentioning churches or but look at churches like Hill Song. Look at what is going on with, with the set man. This thing has been there for years. I could remember there was a period. And I say, no, I don't want Hill Song. I don't want to listen to songs from Hill Song. People in my family, in my house, is like, what's wrong with this man? Not because of anything that is that I hate of the songs. They are nice songs. It's just there's something that to me is superficial about their songs. They're nice, they're funky, all right? Yes, but I'm sorry. Something is not just connecting until all this revelation. And I'm not condemning him, but I'm just saying we have to have a sense of discernment. Because it, it and you can't have discernment, all right, if if the source of your vision, amen, is not God, it's not it's not hedged on the truth, because you can only discern to the level of the quality of truth your spirit, amen, has. You cannot discern, amen, if all that is in your heart, amen, is, is a lie, amen, is, is confusion, amen, is frustration, amen, is God knows what. No, you discern because, amen, your spirit is impregnated with truth. That truth then becomes, amen, what informs and defines the direction, amen, of your spirit in terms of discernment, in terms of wisdom, understanding, and all the fruits of the spirit. And of course, the gifts of the spirit. So all of these things they work hand in hand so strong goals we want to deal with them when we begin to pull down that's why the bible says casting down you've got to cast them down cast them down you've got to be ready you have to engage them you have to be determined you have to be brutal when you're dealing with strong goal hallelujah when there's a strong goal in operation that's not the time amen to you know to play nice that's not the time to say well okay you you take your, you, you you just make your choice no you have to stand your ground Wherever there's a strong goal, amen, you are dealing with an issue of life and death. Because listen, if you don't deal with that strong goal, that strong goal will make sure, amen, that either you are destroyed, amen, or your family members are destroyed, or even your ministry. And the, you see, the most deadly thing about strong goal is that they live with us. They are not external, they are internal. You see, it's, it's, it's easy for you to see an enemy that is coming to attack you or you fight the enemy amen than the one you don't see that is, is there is living with you sleeping with you eating with you drinking with you the stronger you carry to your workplace amen you carry to amen uh, uh, to your to your toilet and kitchen you, you're carrying that stronger while you're cooking you're carrying that stronger amen uh, in anything you're doing you're in the bathroom that stronger is there with you you think I'm going to wash this in the way? Huh? It's, the struggle is there. It's a, it's a mindset. It's a mentality. But this mentality, hallelujah, is, is, is woven through all kinds of foreign, demonic, amen, ideas. Mingled with, amen, wrong values, wrong culture. Yes. 
humanistic belief, amen, that we call democracy. You, you understand? That we call, you know, identity. Yes, that we call feminism, that we call masculinity. All kinds of issues that our life, amen. And people are, and then they're running all over. Then they realize I've got a problem. And they're looking for a psychologist. They're looking for, you know, a prophet that will prophesy. They're looking for all kinds of things. And they, they, they never really, because the stronghold does not want you to know the answer. And does no, in, in fact, when you know the answer, he wants you to believe that the answer is the lie. So you don't put your effort, you don't, you don't put your time into that thing. You know, there are people who want to, who, who say, okay, they want me to mentor them. I say, okay, could you read this book? Some of them won't read the book. Oh, could you uh, listen to this thing? No. But you want me to, so what do you want me to do? You want me to spin food you? No, you're not ready, amen, to, to invest. You're not ready. So wh why do you think you are going to be free when you, are no, you have not come to your mind? You have not come to a realization. You have not come to a resolution that you truly want freedom. The Bible says you shall know the truth. Listen. Nobody feeds you with the truth. When you get the truth, amen, you take it in like a pill. You take it in. You, you, are, you know, there are people who are sick and you ask them to take, you know, to take medicine, to take medication. And rather than them taking the medication, they actually fool the people giving them, you know, and they go throw it away. They never get healed. That's how many of us are when it comes to the things of God. We select, like I said yesterday, we select what we want to hear. Uh -uh, that one... No, I, I'm not ready for that one. That's the stronghold speaking. I'm not ready for that truth. There is no freedom without sacrifice. There is no freedom without sacrifice. You want to be free? You have to be ready. Stronghold. Built within our lives. Strongholds that have been given to us, amen, as, as our identity. This is who we are in this family. All kinds of strongholds today will be manifesting in the place amen, of, 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 you know, of eating. All kinds of, you know, ideas and beliefs will be in operation. All kinds of craziness you're going to see because somebody wants to prove a point. You see, because somebody wants to prove that they are in charge, they are in control. Meanwhile, they are not in control. There's a spirit that is, amen, that is in control of their life. I'm dealing with something this morning and I want you to understand because, oh, we can talk about, oh, the child was born in a manger and all of that. And the, the essence of the birth of our Lord, the reason why he came, amen, we have not even touched him. Well, we have, in fact, we've, we've forgotten it. He came to set us free. How many people are still free today? Creation is still in bondage. Creation, the Bible says, is groaning waiting for emancipation and this emancipation can only come by those who are carrying what is called amen the seed of the son of god the seed of the spirit of sonship only the spirit of sonship can bring liberation and transformation to creation but we'll continue to go through the motions of religion We'll go through the motion. Oh, ooh. like I said, when it comes to December, particularly from the 18th, 19th, some people just shut down on anything called kingdom of God. They shut down. They shut down on their commitment to their work with God. I know it's time to, it's time to jolly. It's time to, come on, celebrate. Come. <laughs> and the enemy at that period in time begins to sow his seed. For the next 12 months of your life, you're struggling with that seed that the enemy saw while you, while, while you were, you know, losing your God, while you are doing your own thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. This is the time for wisdom. But wisdom can only come through knowledge. And knowledge enhances our sense of understanding so that the decisions amen that we make in terms of the purpose that we have come to build amen will motivate and galvanize us to the place of the finish come on friends let me read one or two scripture then i'm gonna begin to round up I don't want your food to get cold. <laughs> so 
I said strongholds of humanistic man-made organized religion in my opinion is one of the most deadliest of all Satan's strategies why 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 listen to this why you may ask me why why because it gives it gives people a false sense of purpose to cover the void of their soul Stronghold of humanistic man-made organized religion, in my opinion, is one of the most deadless of all Satan's strategy. Why? Because it gives you a sense of hope. It gives you a false sense of hope. It gives you a false sense of objective. Ah, we're busy. Hallelujah. It's, it's Christmas. We've got to do this. You're doing things by might and by power. Anything you do by your own human strength and ability, amen, will not wrath, will not bring forth the redemptive counsel of God, the righteousness of God, will not produce lasting joy. I pray we will wake up to this, you know, circles and circles that we're, we're roaming around in every year. You celebrate Christ today just as you celebrated him yesterday. The revelation of the manger, amen, should be in your heart today just as it was in your heart yesterday. The development, hallelujah, and the growth and the path that Christ, amen, charted for you should be what, amen, is galvanizing and pushing you to the place called the Telios. We can't build religion around an event formed and shaped by man. The experience is real. Jesus was born. But somebody built a commerce around it. Have you noticed that amen, people have built commerce around almost every aspect of the truth. Almost every aspect of God's word. People have built industries. People have built industries, amen, around the church. They've built industries, amen, even around the revelation of Jesus. There are places that you will go to, all right, that they will tell you, well, we can prophesy, we can see for you. We can tell you what is going to happen in, in 2023. Just bring money. <laughs> they've built, they've commercialized. Like, that's just the point that I'm making. Christmas has been commercialized. I read an article, I'm not sure if it was an article, that, amen, the church today, I'm not sure if this church in America or the church generally, is a $50 billion, you know, industry. I'm sure it's in America. That cannot be there. Because, I mean, we have, we have churches in Nigeria that, you know, maybe 20 of them can cover that amount. It's, that's, that's, 50 billion is small. I would have assumed they would say maybe 500 billion, I look at that article again. The things of God today has been commercialized. And when we speak like this, people withhold their gift from us. And like I said, it really doesn't bother me. Because God, amen, will always send those, amen, who, who, whose heart, amen, are connecting to this trend. They will say, well, we want to continue to hear this, so we will support this man. I don't have, amen, you know, uh, uh, you know, somebody say, okay, every month this amount comes into your account so you can continue to, no, no. People give at, at you know, at their, at their will, at their desire. And that's why, amen, I speak the way I speak. So that tomorrow, if you decide not to give, I can still continue to speak and tell the truth. Because one day the truth will set you free. And hopefully will set your economy free. Will set your home, your marriage, your family free. Free have we received, freely we give. But the things of God, amen, amen, comes with a price. But this is a price that is, that is priceless. You can buy it. But you can appreciate. That's the point. You can appreciate. Let's not build our life around false hope false purpose false vision people have built grand things do you know there are men of god particularly in america who have literally walked out of a church churches that were built i mean i'm talking about structures and you know in america structures are systems everything must be built amen in accordance to an order you know people have walked out and they're tired they, i can't continue sorry bye they left I thought it's a calling. 
do you walk out of your calling? Well, well, because it wasn't really a calling. It wasn't really built on a vision. It was built on a motivation. It was built, amen, on some purpose that was motivated, amen, by, you know, what you saw. You saw a need. Okay, let's do something. No, no, no. Listen, only that which God calls for in your life will sustain you. He walked out of it. Walked out of God knows what. Just as many are walking out of marriages. And I mean, and there are all kinds of reasons for that. But I'm only telling you that there has to be something beyond yourself. Something beyond your ability. Something beyond your intelligence that is keeping you. Something that is heavenly. And that is what vision is. You see, vision is an heavenly calling. If, if heaven is the one that has called you into that ministry, into that home, into that family, into that community, into that project, guess what? You must depend. You must continue to look unto heaven to sustain you. Because listen, if it's something you, you, came, up, you came up with because you felt passionate, you felt, you know, I tell people, we go through all kinds of, you know, challenges in life. And then we create a purpose around those things. Maybe somebody was raped. And maybe you try to get out of, you try to, you know, uh, 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 recover from, you know, that rape. And then humans for who we are, we then build a ministry around, you know, rape victims. And suddenly we assume that, you know, God will back it up. God will provide for it. You may go through something that, but that may not be what God wants you to deal with. God may want you to support people, yes, who, who have faced the same experience, but that may not be your calling. But naturally, suddenly because of our incident and accidents and experiences, and then we build something around it and we tag it. This is my calling. This is my vision. This is God knows God. Hey, come on. It doesn't work. Vision, hallelujah, is God's purpose before you were born, before you were raped, before you were, yeah, you, you were, you know, you, 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 you know, you were rejected before the man left you. Amen. Yeah. Before you, you thought of, they have designed and ordained you to function and fulfill something. And that vision defines the pathway that is called your purpose. You see, I'm not talking about today, but I'm just trying to tell you why the enemy has sold false, false purpose for us. And we are on a goose chase. We, we're on a goose chase. We're running after, oh, yeah, I'm, no, 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 no. You came up with that. That was your own idea. That was your own idea. And because it's your idea, you would need your own intelligence, your own resource, your own ability, your own capacity, amen, to sustain it. And that's why, I'm sorry to say, that's why many men of God in South Africa, amen, are burning out, are tired. Why? Because, amen, they are the one funding the ministry. They are working full time. They, 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 you know, they're, they're in the secular walk. They're in the secular walk. Working, working, working. And they use their money to want to fund the things of God. Sorry, you missed it. It's not how God designed his work. You can't fund. You cannot use amen, your own money and resource to fund the things of God. It doesn't work like that. That's why many of them, all right, at the end of the day, broke down, collapsed. The ministry closes up or something just happened. Because there's a, there's a limit to what you can take. You have, to, you have to get a boss and go fetch the people. I've seen that ministry. I've seen it. They do it almost every you have, you Sunday morning, the man, is, the man of God is going to preach. But guess what? He's running around driving people. They must use bus to go and fetch people from nowhere. Bring them to where you want to do meeting. And then after, then you still give the people food, you know. You are running a welfare center. You are not running a ministry. Ministry, amen, has a welfare center. But ministry is not a welfare center. Ministry is a place where, amen, you, Im you impart God's purpose, God's vision, God's intention. It's a place where you school people to discover and rediscover earlier and build and empower them to fulfill God's plan for their life. It's not a place where, amen, you seek to maintain people. Ministry, amen, has a place where people must be healed. But ministry is not an hospital. Where you just come and lay down. No, no. If you want to just lay down and get healed, 
There's a point, there's a place where, amen, you will be ministered to, but, but that is not the core. The core purpose, amen, of a godly ministry is to bring redemption, is to preach the gospel of the kingdom, is to equip people to, to, to get out of their limbness, amen, and empower them to fulfill God's dream and purpose for their life. So ministry are, are shutting down. Men of God are burning out. Why? Because they are trying to use their might and power to sustain the thing. I can assure you this morning, the man of God that will be preaching or that is preaching this morning is, is done, is done, you know, runs to pick all kinds of people. Because if people don't come to your church, they will go to other churches. <laughs> So everybody is doing everything to attract. No, it's not about the numbers. It's about you finding your niche. It's about you finding your place. It's about you finding your calling and staying there. That's why I'm going to be sharing some things with you. You know, in this teachings, I'm going to be doing about, you know, vision. All right. Let me see if I can just give you a teaser here. I've got something. Let me see if I can quickly locate it. Yes. Let me show you this quickly if you're watching me. I'm going to be doing some series of teaching. It will blow your mind. It will challenge you. It's a rude awakening. All right? You're going to be seeing this. All right, let me quickly do this. I wasn't meant to do this. But I'm going to be doing this. All right? Quickly. We're going to be looking at, amen, eight process. Eight process that will prepare you to fulfill your godly vision. Eight process. We're going to be looking at all of this thing. Like I said, I'm going to be dealing with this thing very soon. I finished the material. And we're going to see how the Lord, amen, is going to help us. But today we're dealing with, amen, the awakening of the, of, the, of the spirit and the seed of God's redemptive vision for creation. That's what we're dealing with this morning. That is, that is what we are crying over this morning. That is what we are shouting over this morning. That is what we are blasting as a voice of one crying in the wilderness. There's a seed of God's redemption, redemptive vision and we all have to be awakened into it. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening from, you have to go back and look at the pattern and look at the blueprint. It's called the word of God. And not what was passed down by traditions of men, woman of God, man of God. Not what is passed down. Not what you think. Not what you learn in your Bible school. Not what you learn, hallelujah, in your theological school. Not what society told you. Not what, amen. Listen to this. We live in a world that is designed to program us. There are certain people, certain people who sit, amen. Who have studied, who are, they, they are, their duty is to study, amen, moods and study, you know, man and study environment and study pattern and trends, all right? And they create programs to reprogram how we think, how we respond, how we view things. What you call, you know, perspective. This is my perspective. Listen, that perspective, if it's not from God, hallelujah, was 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 strategically infused into your life that's why we say we have to be awakened there are things that you think is part of your life no god god did not god did not put that thing in you somebody somebody planted that seed and they left while men were sleeping they planted that program in you. It's like a chip. And that chip is the one defining how you respond, how you move, how you act, how you define relationship, how you look at money, how you look at values. All of that are programmed. And today we live in a world that we are beginning to understand how this thing works. Many of the things we still practice as, Christ, as, as Christianity today, amen, were implanted by, the, by Catholicism, by the Roman Catholic Church. It's one of the most organized religious system on earth, the Roman Catholic Church. When they, when, when they were captured by Constantine and they used state power to establish what today we call Christianity. You got to wake up. 
and stop following trend or because uh, uh no no listen yes there's the aspect where we fight and challenge you know that which government want to do in terms of shutting down what we define to be christianity i hope you understand that government cannot define or in fact they don't know what christianity is when they talk about christianity they talk about the catholic church and every other organization or a small organization that's why when they refer to the church they refer to the catholic church all right when they need somebody to represent the church they look for the pope or every other person amen that is in the organized you know uh, you know christian though. and that is why those in the charismatic you know pentecostal church you see they are fighting for you know authority they Today, they've also become amen, <laughs> politicians. And Bishop Benson in Daosa was the one, in fact, that promoted that system. All right, he, he is a, one of the first, all right, that got you know that fish cap, amen, and got the rod, amen, just like they used to do back in the days, amen, of the Anglican, all right, and, and it because that is what gives them, amen, if you will, political status and power, and with the big ring. And the chain and all of that and all that comes you know with that the big house the mansions back in the days it was the mess this car i'm from that <laughs> i don't even know what they write today they are planes and all of that it was all part of the program it was all part of what the enemy designed to compromise you and i i went to Bensi idaosa bible school so i saw this thing firsthand so I can tell you this, till today I say this thing, people, I know some people hate me for this, but like I said, I really don't care. I've got one life to live. One life. I'm not living twice. So you have to, you have to save the truth to free other people. You free them. Don't run away from the truth. Run to the truth, my dear sister. You're running from the truth. You run here and there. run to the truth. Don't run away from the truth, my brother. Make your finding. Find out what is the heart of God. What is the mind of God? Why is it that I go to church, I do everything they ask me to do, but still I'm not fulfilled. I'm not satisfied. In fact, I come home looking more tired, feeling more drained. You better know that God is no longer in that thing. It's just a caricature. What you are left with, amen, is a shell. And that's why, amen, yes, by now, men of God are already planning to give you another sense of false purpose for 2023. Yes, because they need your money to continue to sustain the things they are running. They need your presence. They need your number. Because minus you, amen, it's minus that tight. It's minus that offering. So they must do everything. They must tell you what you want to hear. Listen, we read the scripture. Uh, I was yesterday in Second Timothy chapter, you know, chapter, chapter three. It says, "In that day, men will gather for themselves, yes, teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. Why? Because they've developed what is called itching ears." So if people can begin to gather for themselves what they want to hear, and you call that a church. How would you blame me for challenging such, such a standard, such a value? The people are the one defining today. You know, the people. Uh, I, I, I remember back in the days, there are people who come together like you start, like you want to start a company. You come together and say, well, let's start a church. And then they look forward. After, you know, they, they've been meeting and they do their own thing. After a while, they say, okay, let's look for somebody that will preside over us. They are the one initiating all of this. And they are the one paying the pastor. So tell me how can the pastor say anything contrary or challenge their values, challenge their position? Why? Because they are, they are the one providing. They are the one sustaining him. They own the priest. Come on, friends. Have you probed the truth? Have you probed the lie? Have you probed, amen, what men today define as church? Or you're just following you're just following like a mule. You're just following. Like a sheep led to the slaughter. You're just following. Follow the loudest noise. Come on. We've seen it all on, on, on social media, on YouTube. Sometimes I just laugh when I watch this. I say, God help us. We, sh we should not be so, you know, 
silent in the day where our voice needs to be heard. I hope you know people are now looking for alternative to what we call church. People are now looking for alternative to what we call church. And they must, because indeed, God is building his church. And that church, the gate of hell will not prevail. The gate of Hades will not prevail over it. We'll try, but will not prevail. But the church that you and I, the church that man has built, guess what? The church that the false order has built will be brought down by the gate of hell. Because that thing is built on human values, on human standard. A shoot will come from the stem of Jesse. Talking about amen, the birth of Jesus Christ. Whenever God wants to do his thing, he does it through a man, through a human vessel to bring out his counsel. Amen. From his root, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of power. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He would delight in the fear of God. That's the first thing that this thing will show us, will reveal to us. He would delight in the fear of God. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, with his natural eyes. He will not judge by what he hears with his natural ears. Amen. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy with justice. He will give decision to the poor of the earth. Friends, it's a day of the Lord. A roundup. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 from verse 10 says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Did you see that scripture I just read? He would delight in the fear of God. This is a fear that draws you closer. But there's a fear that leads you to dread. There's a fear earlier that leads you to shiver, to go hide. And that was a fear that was ruling the earth before Jesus was born. Herod was a persona of fear. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news. That's what we stand for. The good news is the gospel of the kingdom. Is the gospel of Christ. Amen. And the manifestation of his kingdom. I bring you good news of great joy. Whenever you receive good news. The good news of the gospel of, of Christ. Joy is birthed in your heart. I bring you good news of great joy. That will, listen to this. That will be for all the people. Not just for one region of the earth. Not just for one part of the earth. For all the people. What is this good news? Listen to this, verse 11. Today in the city of David, remember, we said next year is going to be year, this is gonna be the year, amen, of the keys of David. Keys to access, doors, realms, reality that will enhance, that will advance, amen, our movement to us, amen, the ultimate finish. Jesus is from the lineage of David. David plays a key role in the prophetic activity of God and the acceleration of his glorious intention in this in this in this end of days. We are going to be seeing amen the rising again of the tabernacle of David called saints who are the living temple of God whom through their life Christ amen will exhibit his glory his knowledge through their life the knowledge of the glory will fill the earth as the water covers the sea. Today in the city of David, I hope you know that that city of David was once called, amen, the city of the Jebusite. David in warfare, amen, took that place. It's a mountainous order. Where you call Zion was once occupied by the Jebusites. But David, because he understood the vision, he understood the intentions of God, he understood the, the counsels of God. He says, I'm not going to allow evil to continue, darkness to continue to occupy this place. He fought them, hallelujah, until he won that place and transform it. Isn't that what God wants us to do? Now we don't fight, amen, with physical, you know, weapons and all of that. Now we fight, amen, in the spirit. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God. To the pulling down of stronghold, we want to take over the realm. We want our city, our nation, our community, our homes, our family, amen, to be a reflection of the city of David, Hebron. 
But for you to get to Hebron, you've got to leave Cave Adullam. You've got to leave, amen, Ziglag, hallelujah. You've got to leave those dimensions and come, hallelujah, to a place called Hebron. But Hebron was once occupied by the Jebusite. Today in the city of David, listen, what are we doing? You have to understand what the Spirit of God is saying. You have to prepare the way of the Lord. John said, I'm the voice of one cried in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Before Jesus was born, there was a layer. Yes, a preparation. There was a path prepared for him. Listen, Jesus has been born, but he's coming back. Are you and I, are, are we preparing the way? Are we preparing the path? Are we getting ourselves, amen, ready? Is our heart, is our heart becoming an highway, hallelujah, for him, amen, yes, to access the earth. Remember, whenever God wants to come into the earth, he comes through people. It comes through people. His intention and glory, hallelujah, is manifest through a people, through a generation. May we become that generation of men and women, amen, who have offered themselves, offered their houses, houses and household, amen, offer, amen, their resource for the coming of Christ. Because he's coming. He that will come, will come. He will not delay. Today in the city of David, a savior, a redeemer. That's not what Herod wants to hear. That is not what Satan wants to hear. So you celebrating Christmas today. Know why Jesus was born. Know why he came. He came to redeem. He was born to redeem. Not just to be celebrated. Alright. On the table of Turkey. And, and, and you know. And God this thing that we do. Let's understand the order of priority. Let's understand what matters to God. When he was born, he was born in a manger. There was no room in the him. There was no place for him earlier to be born. All that was left earlier was to, was to share a place with goats. Was to share a place with sheep. Was to share a place with pigs. But guess what? Those who are tracking the prophetic program of God could locate him even in that place. The Bible says, wise men came. They would have, I mean, of course, when a king is born, you would have thought this king must be born where? In the palace. Alas, he was born in the manger. And that's still a prophetic, amen, fingerprint speaking to you and I to, to you know, to, to look again, to reevaluate what we call church. When God births his thing, he seldom birth them in a palace. He said, if you're looking for kings, you go to the palace and look for them. You find them with, you know, with, with, with royal robes. But in this new day, God is birthing his thing, hallelujah, in the wilderness that will take over the palaces of men. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. The crooked path must be made straight. Today in the city of David, there was a rude awakening. There was a wake up call. Today in the city of David. So it has already happened. It's like, why are you still doing your own thing? Amen. Just going through your own motion and you know carrying on life, you normal, you know, just doing your own thing. Something is happening that will rock your world, that will shake the very foundation of your existence. Today, in the city of David, the Savior is born. I love what the Lord dropped in my spirit this morning. Where is it? Where is it? Thank you, Jesus. I actually thought I... I shared it, but let me read it out. I think I've got it on my, on my device. I thought I actually shared it. I'm on vision. I'm not sure what. I'm all scattered this morning. <laughs> Well, I can't find it, but I don't. I don't want to uh, uh, paraphrase it. But we will, we will of course, uh, uh, get to know more about this when I, you know, do the teaching on vision, purpose, and focus. But such a profound word that will help us to, you know, to recalibrate our sense of, 
you know, a, a compass and, and, and direction towards the, towards the things of God. But friends, I'm done this morning. All right? Today in the city of David, Savior is born. While you're walking and doing your own thing and eating, you know, and enjoying yourself, you better believe God is birthing, birthing vision in the heart of men. God is impregnating people with dreams and vision that will accelerate his prophetic counsel in the earth. That is the point. That is what I'm trying to say. Today, amen, today in Johannesburg, today in Cape Town, today in Washington, D.C., today, yes, in Nigeria, in Lagos, today, yes, in Cameroon, in, 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 in Ouagadougou, today, amen, in Somalia, today, amen, yes, in Rwanda, today, in Zimbabwe, today, hallelujah, in Malawi, a king is born. While the night is setting on the religious system, there's an awakening of a new light, of a new illuminating order of people. Hallelujah. Call the apprehended ones. Bearers of the light. Walking in the spirit of the faith and hope of the Son of Man. It's a new day. A generation is being awakened. That is the gospel of hope. That is the message of redemption. That is why Christ came to awaken the vision of God in the heart of mortal men again. To awaken the nature and the spirit of the second man, the last Adam. As the first Adam has been compromised, there is now, hallelujah, a rebirth through the vision of heaven. The awakening of the spirit of the second man, the last Adam. Paul got it right when he spoke, amen, that we have a hope. Our hope is not dead. When you look around, you may say, well, there is no one again. Nobody's preaching this, this gospel of the kingdom. Everybody's doing their own thing. No, God still have a people who have not bowed, who have not compromised. God said, Elijah, I say I have 7,000 who have not bowed themselves, who have not compromised on the table of Jezebel. So friends, it's a new day of hope. It's a new day of faith. When we think about Jesus, let's think about, hallelujah, the awakening of a new day, of a new dawn, of a new season. Hallelujah. The seasons of the end, hallelujah, upon us, the culminations of the ages have come upon. Let us think of that which the Spirit of God, amen, wants to do as we have been awakened today in the city of David. A Savior is born. It can save you and I. It can save you and I. Because that's what he came to do. And he is the only savior. Human system cannot save. Human tradition cannot save. No matter how powerful man is, they are but men. They are like, they are like you know, a beautiful flower you see. That is to them tomorrow, they are no more. Men can promise you tomorrow. But they don't own tomorrow. Please, I want you, I want to speak to somebody directly right now. That vision God placed in your heart, don't let it die because there's an awakening. Today in the city of David, it has to be in the city of David. The city of David is the city where I lay. The king, David, has allowed the king of kings to take over. That's why it's called the city of David. Because David has one thing in common. We all know that. is one whose heart is after God. He said, I found me a man whose heart is after me. That's why it's called the city of David. It's not about the legacy of a man. It's about the legacy of what the man did. By allowing God. Amen. By allowing Christ. Amen. Yes. To flow through his life. Jesus came through the lineage of David. Through that lineage, hallelujah, we find somebody, amen, like Ruth. And even, yes, the prostitute. Who saved the people of God, yes, on the balcony of, you know, of, of the wall. You find all kinds of people, amen, in that lineage because of the obedience of one person. Come on, our obedience can trigger things, can accelerate us 
Listen to this. When you begin to respond to what you're hearing right now. Oh, I see God empowering you. I see new life. I see vision. Amen. Yes, guiding and redirecting you. I see vision. Amen. Yes, redressing you as they remove the fig that you've been covering yourself with. I see you becoming a voice. Even when you think you're just but a voiceless, lonely person. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. It's not, about, it's not about multitude. Vision does not need multitude. It only needs the right people. I said vision does not need all the resources. It only needs the right resources. This is about the vision. This is about God's dream. Today, in the city of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He is the Lord. Let your vision begin to speak. Don't die. And don't let the enemy kill you. Don't let doubt and unbelief kill you. Don't let, amen, yes, wrong relationship, wrong ideas, wrong location. If you have been wrongly placed, ask the Lord to grant you grace, to redirect your GPS, reconnect, amen, to the right path. Reconnect to the right location and start all over again. Recalculate. Hallelujah. You are allowed to recalculate. You know what that happens, right? When you miss your path, you can recalculate and you can reconnect to the path, to the Asian path. Come on. This is the day of the Lord. Don't give up. Don't let a man tradition and, and what you see out there overwhelm you. Say, so where do I start from? Start from the point of your vision. Start from the point of, yes, your vision. Remember I said, vision is what defines your purpose. Purpose grants you the pathway. Purpose give you perspective. And that's why you have to have the right sense of vision. Because if you don't have the right sense of vision, purpose may just hijack your life and lead you. Because, you see, if you don't, if you don't have the right sense of vision, your soul will create a man purpose for you. And you may be talented. But talent is not vision. Talent is good. It's given to enhance and accelerate your vision. But if you have not been awakened to a vision and you're running with talent, you can be the best keyboardist, but your life will be full of misery. You can be the best in whatever you're doing, but you will not find joy and peace. All of the things that we're talking about is to grant you peace, is to grant you joy. Yes, for he is the prince of peace. He is the king of of our joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that God has a word for somebody this morning. And that's why I decided to come. We started amen, broadcasting. Nobody joined then. One person joined. And I'm sure as we're about finishing, maybe we have a few other people. But I know this is a word that will be transmitted Across the, across the board, across the land, across the city, across the nation. Why? Because this is a word that the Lord has ordained for one or two people. Yes, to wake them up, to, to, set their, to set their feet on the right path, to set their heart on a journey again so that heaven's intention can be fulfilled, amen, through their life. Today, don't forget, today in the city of David, a king is born. But this king is still a child. He will learn to grow. Give the vision space to grow. Listen to this. And this is, and this will be a sign unto you. You will find him. You will find the baby wrapped, hallelujah, in a swaddling cloth, laying in a manger. He's a king, but still he needs help. <laughs> is a king but he still needs to be nurtured is a king he still needs to be carried he still needs to be fed but he's a king are you getting what I'm saying don't give up your vision will grow you your vision will develop your vision will create amen, at the due time the resource this is not where I was seven years ago. This is not where I was when the Lord brought me to this nation. 
The vision is still speaking. Oh, there have been challenges. Oh, there have been times that sometimes I feel like giving up. I just feel like quitting. Because yes, things are tough, rough, difficult. You will meet all kinds of things along the path of your growth and development. But don't give up. Don't quit. I can tell you from experience. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Learn to dream again. Today, in the city of David, a king is born. A king that still needs to be fed. Think about that. He's a king, but he still needs to be fed. In fact, they were trying to kill him. His parents had to take him down to Egypt. But he's a king. He's a king. They had to, they had to take him. They had to escape with him. But he's a king. He's got power. He's got authority. But his due time has not come. His due day. His due season has not come. So don't abort the vision. Don't abort the dream. He's a king. But they had to run with him. They had to speak to his father in a dream. Get up now. You and the mother and the baby. Go down to Egypt. Because those who are after the boy's life are coming. They want to kill him. Take him. You have to learn to nurture your dream. You have to know where to be. You see, the, the, the vision, the dream will, will define your path. You, sometimes you find yourself in a, in a strange land. I found myself in South Africa. Not because I want to be in South Africa. But because God's dream and vision for me led me here. You understand that? There are a lot of things that I've sacrificed to be here and to be doing what I'm doing. Yes, that is what the dream, the vision of God, hallelujah, defines for you. The vision will define your own path. Will define your own war. Would define your own success. Would define your own enemy. Would define your victory. Hallelujah. So find your vision. Don't enter 2023 without a man asking the Lord, why am I here? Like I said, don't just be going through some occupation that is not allowing you to occupy the space heaven has given to you. Every one of us has been alluded a portion, hallelujah, a territory to be taken. Don't be just dilly-dallying, floating here and there. Changing jobs here and there. What is God's purpose for your life? What is God's intention for your life? What is God's dream for your life? Because if you find it, everything you ever need is locked within. Have you noticed? A king was born, but he's a child. Resource came from the east. Resource came from the east. They brought, they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gold was brought to him till today. The best safe haven to secure whatever financial economic crisis is still gold. Still gold till today. With all the technology... People today, people are talking about, yes, investing in gold. Because they are realizing that the paper is paper. <laughs> you create all kinds of artificial, you know, uh, uh, inflation. You can't do that with gold. Ghana is waking up. Ghana said, now, now we want to, we want to begin to trade with gold. We want to begin to invest in gold. We, we are supposed to be one of the largest gold producers in the world. And yet we only have 8%. No, no. Yet... Countries that don't even have gold, they have more gold than us. So Ghana said, no, we are going back to the old order. We're going back to the ancient times. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gold is the key. They brought gold. They brought frankincense. Frankincense is, a, is, is symbolic of his ministry. It's to prepare him. They, they, brought, they brought myrrh. Yes. It's to embalm him after he died. And after that, his job is done. Ascended to heaven. It's a day of resurrection. Oh, friends, let's rejoice in the Lord. This is God's word to you today. This is my gift to you. Amen. As Christmas present, if you will. This is the voice of God coming to you. Celebrate him. Yes. Yes. 
If you, are, if you are just joining, you can go back after I'm done and listen to the whole message because this truth will set you free. See, this is why I know I can't give up because the word of the Lord is on my lips. I can't give up. The word of the Lord is on my lips. I didn't plan this. But I only yield myself to God and say, Speak. Help me, Lord. Help me to be a voice. I want to remain a voice in a voiceless society. In a day where voices are being shut. In a day where men and women are being shut down. I want to be a voice. Even if, even, even if I am the only lonely voice crying in the wilderness. Amplify my voice. Save that to one person. Maybe two. Maybe three. Maybe four. Who knows? Maybe a city can hear the voice of God and be born and be transformed in a day. Can a nation be born in a day? Of course, when the right message, when the right prophetic voice hit them, a nation can be born in a day. God is no respecter of man. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you. We thank you for this truth. May truth continue to guide our path. May truth continue to lead our way. May we be people of hope. May we not live as those without hope. We have hope because Christ was not just born. He lived this world. He showed us how to live our life. He showed us how to return back to you. Because this is what the gospel is all about. A gospel that leads us back to you. It's not going through some religious motions. It's not going through some traditions. It's not going through some organized religious system. No, it's a relationship. Help us to return back to this relationship. Help us to be reconnected to you. Help us to live a life that, that pleases you, that brings pleasure, honor, and grace to you. Help us to show, yes, your light in a world that is infested by darkness. Oh, your word said we must arise and shine for our light has come. We say today our light has come and your glory is risen upon us. We love you, Father. May we continue to live and bask in this truth. May you be glorified. Thank you, Father, because indeed I have done all that you desire me to do this morning. So I wait, Lord, for my reward. You are my provider. You will sustain me with all that I need, O oh God, to continue to sound this trumpet, O oh God, even in the coming year. Touch the hearts of men. Maybe anyone watching or listening to say, how can I be a blessing financially to this work so that this work can continue? We don't want to see this work shut down. We don't want to see a situation where this man no longer have what it takes. To continue to do what he needs to do. Because I've got needs. So I thank you father. That you will steer hearts. But more so I want to thank you for that man. That woman. Yes. That you have touched. Who have continued to support me oh God. Yes Lord. Thank you father. For that widow's might. That little that they give oh God. Maybe it's their best. But I thank you. I honor you Lord. That they will not lose their reward. You will continue father. To replenish them Lord. Their, their seed will continue to speak oh God. Yes father. In places that matter. I declare oh God. Abundance and grace. And, and, and multiplications oh God. Into their space. Into their life. And those who really want to give. Who don't have. Father touch their heart provide for them make 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 a means uh, a way for them show them guide them oh god how to prosper so that they can turn back and say i want to be a blessing to that man who you use to lead me to guide me to instruct me to realign me freely we have received freely we give thank you father for this truth may we rejoice in you and celebrate and continue to celebrate your life in us because that is our desire. We bless you, Father. Amen and amen. Thank you so very much, uh, my dear sister and commissar. Really appreciate it. Have yourself a wonderful day with all my daughters out there. God bless you. All right. Send my love to my daughters. I'm talking about your daughters. All right. God bless you. Love you. Enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you all. I'll see you hopefully tomorrow again or maybe today if the Lord permits us. But uh, I'm done for now. 
enjoy the rest of your day have a wonderful uh, uh, christmas with your family and friends and anyone you're celebrating with today and if you're celebrating alone remember you're not alone christ the hope of glory is with you amen this is our kingdom life devotional series and this is our session 18 god bless you we'll see you again continue to have a wonderful day bye bye